That Sober Guy podcast contains adult content, merciless truth, and emotional nudity. Listener discretion is advised. I'm Shane Ramey. You're listening to That Sober Guy podcast, and we help people stay sober. If it's your first time listening, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here today. You can find more podcasts, more resources, and also contact us by going to thatsoberguy.com. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at That Sober Guy Podcast. All the links from today's show will be in the show notes. Is there such thing as a healthy beer? Is there such thing as a healthy beer? What a question, right? We're going to talk about it today. I found an article that came across my desk this morning. It was titled, What is the Healthiest Beer? Consider these factors before you crack open a cold one. <laughs> Just had that flashback of that crack, that pop of the can, the twist of the bottle. Got a picture of a 40 ounce. I'm not glorifying this. I'm not reminiscing. But in light of it, hey, you do have those flashbacks sometimes. It's totally normal. As I said that, I heard the pop. It's a hot day, hamburgers, hot dogs. If you're a true American, America, (laughs) hell yeah. (laughs) Spring and warm summer months on the horizon. That's how the article starts here. Should back up a little bit. Articles by Claire Mulroy from the USA Today. And uh, as I was logging in this morning, getting some stuff together, saw it pop up and once again titled, What is the Healthiest Beer? Uh, consider these factors before you crack open a cold one. I'll be sure to put the link in the show notes for you. So I'd, it's only about it since it's a five minute read, not a not a very long article, but definitely interesting. So I thought, what the heck? Let's jump on on a Monday today, and uh, well, at least when I'm recording this, I'm not sure when I'll release it. Maybe today, sometime this week, and uh, and talk about it a little bit. So I figured I'll just uh, go through the article, and uh, we'll uh, we'll commentate. We'll talk a little bit about it hopefully prompt some discussion questions or some thoughts from your end. I'd be curious to hear what you think as I post a little promo video on Instagram at that sober guy podcast. Maybe you can go on there and uh, comment on it. That'd be great. And uh, see what, see what you guys are thinking, what your thoughts are, what your opinions are. Is there a healthy beer? What's the healthiest beer? I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, the one with no alcohol in it before I go <laughs> the, the beverage, whatever it may be with zero alcohol, alcohol in it would probably be my my guess that's the healthiest but let's see what this article has to say it says we're well into spring and warmer warmer months are on the horizon which means it's time for some barbecues some outdoor picnics and some pool parties why did i say it like that and some pool parties (laughs) i don't know i thought of uh i thought of billy madison there real quick it's tuesday it's nudie magazine day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I thought about the pool parties and the big, what do they have? A big swan. Stop looking at me, swan. <laughs> One of the best 90s movies of all time. And if you're uh, like all the 40 and up people are like, yes. And all the people 30s and younger are like, what is Billy Madison? Who's that guy? He's old. <laughs> Probably one of the best movies ever. In any case, in any case, pool parties. And what goes better? with grilling up some hamburgers and some hot dogs than a nice cold beer. I can tell you about 30 things that go better than that, but hey, to each his own, right? We bring beers on the boat. We pack them in the coolers. As you can hear my smart ass uh, tone in some of this. (laughs) It's just like, let me just stop real quick because it's so, the normalcy bias, it's just what we do. We bring beers on the boat. We pack them in the coolers. And it is, it's what we do. But I'm just here to say how, how fucking retarded that is. Like, why? Why do we do that? Like, why do we do it? Why? Why do we feel the need to have to pack beers everywhere? We, we, we have to escape the reality of going to enjoy to do something that we should be in the reality of enjoying because we enjoy to do it. But we have to escape that moment instead of enjoying it enjoying the moment, the specific thing we're doing, we have to enjoy it with ice cold beers on the boat or at the game, packed in the coolers or on the beach, tailgating. Like, give me a break, man. 
give me a break. Uh, it's just, it drives me insane sometimes. I just, I want to know when this culture, this, this, this thought that we have to drink no matter what we do changes. That's what I want to know. I want to know when it happens. And I'll tell you when it, I think it's start. I think it started to happen. I do. And I think the more we talk about it and, and the more I'm a smart ass and not just me, but so many of us call this crap out for what it is and how dumb it is. Like we don't need beer. We don't need alcohol. We don't need poison to get through life. And I know what you might be thinking like, well, man, what if I'm hurting or I have pain or, you know, and I use it as a tool. I understand that part of it, but there's a way to get through that without it. There is. And there's lots of different resources. Okay. Let me go on here. There are even dedicated summer ales that pop up like boners in sweatpants during the warmer months of the year. <laughs> I, I added the boners in sweatpants in there. That's not from Claire. Was that her name, Claire? Uh, yes, Claire. Claire. Claire's a fat girl's name. Uh, name that movie. <laughs> Just kidding, Claire. Claire, uh, Claire Mulroy, I'm not calling you fat. That's a quote from The Breakfast Club, one of my favorite 80s movies. Now I'm really outdating myself okay alcohol is one of beer's main draws and this is what i liked about this article it's the the, the headline's a bit misleading because it does go into some good stuff right here alcohol so good job claire and uh alcohol is one of beer's main draws it's ingrained part of the social culture all over the world it's also get this a toxic substance excessive alcohol consumption can lead to high blood pressure cancer, a weakened immune system, cognitive dysfunction, mental health problems, and alcohol dependency. Alcohol reduces our inhibitions after consumption, but it also has stimulant effects that impact sleep, which can affect overall quality of life. It's like, I mentioned this on a podcast I was a guest on recently. I had people come to me, I'm going, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, the jail and, uh, you know, trouble and uh, fines and I can't seem to get it together and I'm all this money and blah, 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 down the list of all this stuff. And you step back in a minute and, and, and you ask the person, well, what is the one thing, all the stuff you just puked all over, like what is the one thing that, is in common with all those things that have happened to you. I don't know. Alcohol. Like, come on. How, how do you not see that? Anytime. Like, in my own experience, when I had stuff going down where I was getting in trouble, making poor decisions, um, just being a jackass straight up, every single time it had alcohol involved in it or some sort of substance involved in it every time. There was, I mean, maybe there was the rare occasion where it didn't, but almost every time it was. So we have to take a look at that. Like I've said this so many times before. And I, lo I love this. Like I've never heard anybody say, hey, my habitual drinking habits have really improved my life. <laughs> like, have you ever heard anybody say that? I haven't. And uh, that's because it, it doesn't. Alcohol does not improve your life. It may help you escape for the time being, for a moment, for a night, for a few hours, but the following day, unless you keep going, which we all know where that leads, and let like the following day, those worries, those um, financial issues, uh, legal issues, marital issues, relationship issues, whatever issues it is, work issues, they compound a little bit each day that we don't deal with them. All right, let's go on. Off my soapbox, sorry there. Uh, don't apologize, it's a sign of weakness. I'm just kidding, it's not. I'm just kidding. See how contradicted I am today? <laughs> it's only a sign of weakness if you apologize habitually and you don't really mean it. Put it that way. All right. The healthiest beer then, according to Moore, is one that has the lowest ABV. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I missed a, I missed a sentence here. Let me go back a second. Um, it, this is uh, which can affect overall quality of life. Okay. It doesn't matter where the alcohol is coming from. What matters is the overall alcohol the ABV more says. So whether that's from beer, whether that's from wine or whatever other liquor, it's the alcohol itself that is the issue. The healthiest beer then, according to Moore, is the one that has the lowest ABV or alcohol by volume. A standard drink of regular old beer, according to the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, is a 12-ounce beer that contains 5% alcohol. 
But a quick trip to the beer aisle can have you buying a six pack with upwards of 8% ABV or some as high if we're going to get into that malt liquor, son. 18%. That's what I used to drink. That's right. I used to drink a lot of different stuff, but I used to love the malt liquor with the high ABV because it got you tore up quick. Why would you not? I'm not trying to drink because I enjoy the taste of it. Uh, anyone who says, I really enjoy the taste of a beer, you're either a really freaking nerd or you're lying, like straight up. <laughs> you're a beer nerd <laughs> and whatever. I don't like the taste of it personally. Ugh, not good. You think you're drinking one beer, but you just had two drinks in one can. <laughs> I want to look something up here. I want to see what the ABV. Let's go with Mickey's first. ABV of Mickey's malt liquor. I'm just curious because I used to that'd probably be my go-to. Uh, let's see if I can find this on the fly here. Are they going to give it to us? I'm going to beeradvocate.com. And here it is. Rank 61, 402 reviews, half a quarter. Oh, man, they got the old school Mickey's Mickey's 22-ounce uh, can here. Dang, that is old school looking right there. Uh, I'm not finding the ABV there. Anyone curious? I'm going to say it's probably anywhere from 12 to 16%. I'm going to check one more spot so I don't bore you too much here. Nope, that's not it. All right, well, I don't think I'm going to find it. That's something. Oh, wait, ABV, malt liquor. Oh, they're just saying malt liquor. The average is 6 to 9% for malt liquor. And malt liquor beers are usually sold in 40-ounce bottles. Yes, they are. Smash your 40 to the face, son! <laughs> don't, don't do it. I'm just kidding. All right, the past decade century has seen the rise of health beers that boast electrolytes. Are you kidding me? electrolytes so that way right after i run a marathon i can just pound a beer in antioxidants and key nutrients but don't be fooled more says most of this is marketing language to get consumers to justify their alcohol consumption see look at that again straight lying they call it marketing language it's actually just called straight bullshit is what it's called it's not called a marketing language it's bullshit they lie to us to get us to uh drink more and justify the reasoning for drinking the alcohol. It's got electrolytes in it. Oh man, did you hear that new uh, shitty beer? It's got antioxidant. Well, they don't say that, but they say, oh, it's great. But it's got antioxidants and key nutrients in it. It's good for you. Are you kidding me? Like, give me a break. If beers are a source of antioxidants and nutrients, this goes on the article, then we have a lot of other issues we need to consider. Moore says laughing. I love that. There are a few beers that are fortified with various ingredients. But I certainly would not turn to beer as my choice of nutrition. Imagine that. Regardless of how beer is made, it's the alcohol content that's going to make the biggest negative health impact. Once again, alcohol, not good. The more alcohol, the worse. The more you drink, the more intoxicated you get. Usually tends to make poorer decisions as you continue to go on. It's not rocket science here. Now, article goes on to say, that doesn't mean you have to give up beer or alcohol in general to have a healthy diet, Moore says. Though there are certain, uh, there's certainly health benefits to sober lifestyles. And yes, there is. And, and it does say you don't have to give up beer, alcohol in general. Maybe not, but I'd highly recommend it because once again, nobody has ever said, hey, my habitual drinking has really improved my life. <laughs> Still never heard it. So a sober lifestyle, definitely the way to go for me. Low calorie and light beer are healthier options. They're generally made with more water than standard beers to cut down on the alcohol content. Yeah, maybe like a uh, Bud Light, maybe. That always tasted like skunk piss water to me. But not everyone, that wasn't in the article, by the way. Just my opinion. My opinion. Any of that, any of the light beers, but specifically Bud Light. Oh, God, what? just gross. That, that beer sucks. And no wonder nobody's buying it. It tastes like crap. Not everyone likes the taste of light beers. Nope. Which, Moore says, gives you an opportunity to evaluate why you're drinking in the first place. If you want to have a beer, he says, have a beer sometimes. 
have a beer. So see, that never resonated with me. I always hear people say, hey, you want to have a beer? I want to have a beer. I want to have 20 beers. I don't want to have a beer. What's the point? What is the point in having a beer? And that's the issue with it, right? We have a beer, which leads to another beer, which leads to three beers, which leads to 20. Now I'm passed out in the gutter, puking on myself, and uh, my wife hates me. And I've lost my job. And oh, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> What was that? What I don't know what was. I'm a little excited today, guys. I'm a little excited. But it's good. We got to do this sometimes. We got we got to have some fun, right? Can't just talk about all the serious boring stuff all day. It's not boring, but All right, is what here's the question. Here's a question they propose in the article. Is one beer a day good for you? Is one beer a day good for you? No. <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. The cent- I do know, but the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention defines moderate drinking as no more than one drink for women and two drinks for men in a single day. I'm going to go ahead and argue that two drinks a day probably uh, is some early signs of alcoholism, but hey, that's just my uh, my opinion there. Or maybe not even alcoholism, maybe just a need to escape and probably some issues to deal with if you're having two drinks every single day or more. There's been some research suggesting a lower risk of diabetes for frequent drinkers compared to those who didn't drink. <laughs> and one study found favorable effects, uh, favorable effects on HDL function or good cholesterol in moderate beer uh, intake. So can you just imagine this real quick? I just want you to play, play this out real quick. You go to the doctor and you're sitting there and, uh, and, and, and uh, the doctor says, uh, well, you know, uh, you're at a high risk for uh, for diabetes, so uh, I think you should start frequently drinking. That might cure those, uh, or at least put you at a lower risk of diabetes. I, that just sounds like such bullshit to me. Like, where does that where does that study come up? How does it like how does that play out? Because that doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it goes on to say, is this a never drink alcohol message? Is this a never drink alcohol message? No, but the benefits of not drinking alcohol certainly outweigh the potential benefits of it, Moore says. Great, great point. I love that line. Is this a, I'm gonna just read it again. Is this a never drink alcohol message? No, but the benefits of not drinking alcohol certainly outweigh the potential benefits of alcohol. So so what's the point then? Why drink it? Why drink it? And you know, go down the list of things why people might drink. But for me, I'm not, I'm not touching it, man. I'm not touching it. Why? Beer can also impact weight. Absolutely. How about the tire around your stomach right now? How's that feeling for you? Alcohol itself has calories, but it's not acting alone. Uh, we're more likely to overeat when our inhibitions are lower. And because alcohol is a toxin, your body is going to work to get rid of it first. And the other food in your system will take longer to digest definitely tend to overeat. I used to sit in the garage and and drink and just eat chips, whatever, go sweets. I mean, all kinds of stuff and not good. And then you compile that with the calories of beer. You're going to be a fat ass. Like, sorry, you drink too much. That's probably what's going to happen to a lot of, a a lot of us, especially dudes. We start getting our thirties and our forties. Dude, our metabolism is not the same anymore. If you're pounding back beers, those calories will eventually, you'll be skinny fat. You ever seen the skinny fat guy? Yeah, don't be the skinny fat guy. Like that's gotta be one of the most like unattractive, funny looking things I've ever seen in my life is the skinny fat. You know what the skinny fat guy I think of first? You ever seen, um, uh, what's it called uh, with Hank? Uh, King of the Hill, King of the Hill, Hank Hill. They got the neighbor. That's a skinny fat guy. That's the first guy I think of. You know his name. He talk, or You probably do. I don't remember it, but he talks fast and funny. All right, let's go on with the article. We're almost done here, and we'll wrap up today. I just wanted to throw this out there. thought it was an interesting talk, topic. Great article um, because I, I think it's, it's written pretty fair with some good points to it as well as some good takeaways and uh, research that you can find if you're interested in digging more. Once again, I'll put this link in the show notes for you so you can go check it out for yourself. Um, all right. Where'd I go here? Is one is one beer a day good for you? Okay, t- talked about weight. Uh, one beer after a long work day. Okay, so t- it's going to talk about this, but I just want to say real quick, like how how often is that for dudes? And even for some of us old school folks who saw our parents do that, where it's like we work hard, 
um, we come home and we have a drink to escape. We have a couple of beers. We have a, we have a cocktail, uh, um, whatever it is, because we need to wind down and, and, and chill out. And you start doing that and it becomes a habit. And then you're into a couple of drinks a day. And then you're into every single day you have to drink. It's very easy, uh, to, to, uh, to get into that routine. And I think those routines are some of the hardest ones, especially for dudes to break, like who maybe you do construction all day and you work your ass off and you work hard and then you come home and dude, your body hurts and you're tired and dude, a great tool in that moment that sounds great is to have a few beers after a long day because you can relax and it helps to alleviate some of that pain. Um, you know, maybe you're, you, it helps alleviate you being tired and irritated. And like, I just want to say like, I'm and, and you see, even in some of the videos or I've, I've talked about, I say drinking is for pussies and it's, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that like, I think every dude who drinks is a pussy. That's not what I'm saying. It's kind of a play on words there. And what I'm saying is, is dude, I understand number one, um, even though it might not sound like that, that's, that's a bit of a straightforward way to put it. Drinking is for pussies, but like you get home after a long day, I've been there and it's so easy just to go crack a beer. And that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The ease, like we take the pussy way out. We go, oh, okay, I'm just going to go have a few drinks. Cause that's easy. And then I can just numb out and escape reality that my body hurts. And you know, I'm, I'm pissed off cause I hate my job or I got stuff going on with my wife and she upsets me or pisses me, whatever it is. The easy way is to go grab a beer or have, have a few drinks or, or purposely get in an argument so I can leave and go to the bar or whatever it is. Like that's the pussy way out. Drinking is for pussies when you put it like that, because we're not willing to put the work in and actually start to work on what the real issues are. That's what I mean when I say that. So there's work to be done. I get it. And it's not easy, but it's possible. You can live a life without alcohol, period. Okay. Off my soapbox again, but I just wanted to share that. Um, all right. One beer after a long work day can also affect your quality of sleep if it's close enough to bedtime. And I remember that a lot drinking. My sleep was terrible. Alcohol is a, 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 a sedative, but it eventually wears off and it can cause you to wake up during the middle of the night. So I don't know if you've experienced that. If you drink a lot or you have drank a lot in the past, you probably have like your sleeping sucks. And, and except when you're just flat passed out and then you wake up and you don't know what the hell happened. And that's just as bad and dangerous, I think. But like your, your patterns are off. And if you get crappy sleep, you're going to be restless, irritable, and discontent. You're going to be pissed off when you get home from work. You're going to be wanting to escape reality. And the first thing you're going to turn to, because it's the easy way out and drinking is for pussies is you're going to take a beer. You're going to take a drink. So we got, we, you know, I'm just, just pointing that out. The sleep patterns that is one of the symptoms of over drinking and drinking habitually, which also numbs you from connecting spiritually, but that's a whole different story. Okay. Because of this more recommends being selective about when you drink and setting parameters for yourself. Maybe that's only drinking with your friends or a few times a week week. I'm going to go ahead and add it in. How about just not drinking at all? Um, okay. Wrapping up. How do I want to show up? How do I need to show up the next day? Moore says of his cons, uh, consumption decision-making. So if it's a Thursday night and I want to go to happy hour with my friends, do I really have an important meeting Friday morning? Are my kids going to get up at 6 a.m.? And do I need to be on my A-game? Asking some of those questions for those of you who are not, uh, or who are still out there drinking, trying to figure it out, wondering if you should stop. You know, those are some of the questions we can ask ourselves. But I hope you enjoyed this today. I thought it was a great article um, I know, uh, I know I'm having a little bit of fun today. I hope you enjoy that too. Hey, we got to laugh. There's no point in being sober, um, in, in being, uh, lame and being boring. Like it's not boring at all. It's one of the best things I've ever, best, best decisions I've ever made in my life. And it's really put me on a path, uh, to get to talk with a lot of great people, meet a lot of great people. And I'm not just talking about like, cause I do podcasts or I'm just talking about in general just the conversations I get to have just on a regular daily basis out in my community, out in public, people asking, oh, you're sober? How do you do that? Like, how do you do that? And I love talking about it and sharing like some thoughts and experience and tips. And um, a lot of the time that rolls into, uh, you know, a spiritual walk, which then you can share a bit of that. 
There's just so many benefits, not only just the health benefits, but um, the emotional benefits, the spiritual benefits, the connection benefits to just being sober. It's like, it's like, what is the healthiest beer or the best beer for you? I drink uh, Ultra because it's way light and it's less calorie. How about just don't drink? Why? How about just find something else to do? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just so much better. And I can't stand these huge companies that are just literally having a, a, just a terrible effect on so many people's lives because of alcohol. And it's, it's hidden in there. And you'll see that in the first part, when I mentioned in the first part of this article about the marketing um, that they do, they hide stuff in there. And it's, it's just flat out BS, like period, flat out BS. So I hope you enjoyed the podcast today. Uh, tell a friend, man. I'd love it if you, if you shared the podcast uh, sometime, that'd be great. Um, if you want to quit drinking, uh, you can go to thatsoberguy.com. we got all kinds of great resources there, including our 30-day quit drinking dude challenge. If you sign up, you get 10 bucks off of that. Love you guys. Peace, love, and respect. Keep your blood clean. Your